Cherokee artists have always played a major role in our tribe's culture. Artist Roy Boney Jr. represents a new generation of Cherokee artists. While his artwork may be inspired by his Cherokee heritage, it's probably not what you'd expect, and that's exactly the way he likes it. The word for art in Cherokee is tathilosta. The word itself is describing measuring. So it's talking, if you're drawing, you're like making lots of tiny little measurements. So it it's, talks about the idea of how uh, planned and accurate art is, the process of making art. You know, people have never seen some of, some of this type of stuff, so they would ask me, you know, like, are, are you really doing native art? And I always say, yes, I am, because I'm Cherokee and I'm making art, so it, it's Cherokee art. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Roy Boney Jr. I grew up in the community of Iron Post, which is just south of Locust Grove, it's a very small Cherokee community there. I was raised in a, a, a Cherokee-speaking family. I was always drawing pictures, that was just something I've always done, you know, and uh, I didn't think anything about it. If you're a native person and you're an artist, everyone says, well, you need to do this type of art. They would give me pictures of like, you know, Indian in the headdress on a horse, you know, and that wasn't my experience. Cherokees, we have our own distinct culture. I said my interest in the digital arts is kind of what got me away from that. Growing up with, you know, Cherokee as part of my background with the language, I wanted content that was in Cherokee, but it really wasn't out there. Yeah, a lot of my pieces uh, start with uh, like a word or a phrase in Cherokee and I kind of work from there. The language does inform a lot of the pieces. I like to incorporate the, uh, you know, some of the more traditional characters in Cherokee, you know, stories like the trickster and, you know, the deer people, the, the turtles and the, like the raccoon and different things. I like the trickster stories because they, uh, one, they're entertaining, you know, the trickster's always getting into trouble and causing some mischief and, a lot of times they're humorous, and but in the end, they impart a lesson to you. Uh, you know, people that hear the stories or read them or whatever, uh, they always end up learning something from that story. And a lot of times it deals with uh, basically how to behave as a Cherokee. You know, like well, things that you're supposed to do, or think actually it's things you're not supposed to do as a Cherokee. You know, because the trickster's always doing something wrong or getting into trouble. I do what I can to help promote the language and culture as much as I can. Exploring the use of Cherokee and using the language in a more popular culture type of format like you know, animations and videos and comics and design. I think it, it shows that as a people that we're relevant because a lot of people tend to dismiss you know, tribes as like either not even around anymore or just stuck in the past. One of my goals as an artist is to incorporate the imagery and the symbols of Cherokee things into my art so people can see it and kind of start to recognize some of these elements that they may not be familiar with. All the, the, the really good art, I think, you know, of any culture, there's always an element of commentary to it and it expresses the, uh, the time, place, and the people in which it was created. The main statement that I'm trying to in part is uh, that we are a distinct people, that we have our own culture, our own symbols, our own icons. As a Cherokee artist especially, that's, that's my goal, is to help you know, put the, the Cherokee point of view out there. For a closer look at Roy's art, go to our website, oco.tv, and click on the links mentioned tab.